Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from the road famous Ice House for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Pasadena Ice House, we're here. Make some fucking noise. Fuck yeah. Hey, everybody, look, Red Band's here, everyone. Hey. Wow, what an exciting time this is. My goodness, business is a boom and life is good. Hey, look, everybody, it's the great Ryan J. Ebel drawing tonight's episode. This is unbelievable. The crowd goes wild. Fuck yeah. Every, a fun fact, believe it or not, everything's going on sale right now at RyanJEbelt.com. It's an end of the world. Everything must go. End of the world savings at RyanJEbelt.com. Posters, prints, everything over there. Very exciting. And uh, life is good. Every single gig we have is rescheduled. Everything is canceled and or rescheduled. That includes Tacoma, Miami, Moon Tower, absolutely everything. WrestleMania, everything is being rescheduled. No better time to hire people to work. (laughs) There's an epidemic going on. No better time to find employees. According to ZipRecruiter Research, nearly three-fourths of employers say they are finding it difficult to fill positions. They've taken bold steps, like 68% of employers have raised their wages, 23% have increased their benefits. And if you have a difficult role to fill, no matter what your industry, hire with ZipRecruiter. And now you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. Yeah, the cool thing about ZipRecruiter, they send your job to over 100 job sites, of the top job sites. But they don't just stop there. With their powerful matching technology, ZipRecruiter scans thousands of resumes to find people with the right skills and experience for your job. And then actively invites them to apply. You can even add screening questions to your job listing so you can filter candidates and focus on the right ones. Absolutely. ZipRecruiter is so effective that four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. So try ZipRecruiter for free. Our listeners can go to ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash K-I-L-L-T-O-N-Y. I'm sure you're looking for new employees right now. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash KillTony. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to... Higher. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly there's an epidemic going on, people. The coronavirus is gripping the globe. Gripping the globe. That's what, that's what they say. Gripping the globe. And uh, it's a really big deal. We clearly have no <laughs> guest on tonight's episode. As with all road episodes, we go guestless. Tonight, we've also gone... Audienceless, an audienceless episode. There's a couple people here. Shout out to our friend from Vito's Pizza, Curtis, right? Charlie, Charlie, of course. <laughs> Good old Charlie from Vito's Pizza. Oh, Chris is the sound guy here at the Ice House. Shout out to Mitch and the Ice House for having us. Those are the only other people here. However, ladies and gentlemen, there is, believe it or not, there is a band on this show. Every single week, they commit to being different characters. Sometimes it's a new character. Sometimes it's an old character. Tonight, for the first time ever, they are some of my favorite characters. They are themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, don't make some noise for the best damn band in the land, the Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, Chroma Chris, and Jesse Johnson. (laughs) What an exciting time. Watch that cord. Oh, 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 oh. wow. This is literally ten times weirder than I thought it would be, everyone. (laughs) This is awesome. Welcome to the show, guys. This is exactly how I thought it would be. There you go. Well, you are a genius. There you are. I love it. Absolutely. Welcome, guys. Come on in. Settle in. This is a special episode of the show. We have a bunch of questions from fans and uh, some special people. Welcome. Joel, how you doing? I'm good, man. I think Bill Billingsley might be fucking coming out tonight, dude. Whoa, look out. You guys got alcohol over there? Yeah, there's a bartender here if you want to order a drink. 
Janice, can you grab me one? Tito's sugar free. A Tito's sugar free. Oh, no, no. Jack and diet, please. I forgot. Beautiful Jack and diet. That's good. Shout out to David Deary, who's here running around, more paranoid than anybody else. He's convinced this is truly that we have days left to live. He's going around talking with everyone about it. Jeremiah, how are you, my friend? I'm good, pal. Yeah, we uh getting a getting a stool ready for the sheet music. We actually prepared music for tonight, so there you go. That's good. I like that. Well, we set up over there. Let me just tell you, I went to the grocery store last night. I went this morning. Yeah, I went last night because I'm like, I'm going to go to Whole Foods right before they close. And wow, it really hit me exactly <laughs> what is going on out there. The only food left is gluten-free food. And it's just <laughs> stocked all the way to the brim. Everything gluten-free is there. All the other food is gone. Yeah. Which leads me to believe that no one's ever eaten this gluten-free shit. That's hilarious. It is funny to see what was gone and what wasn't. Like Coca-Cola products, almost all gone, except like a couple two liters. Pepsi, the whole, th- like every single thing Pepsi makes was there. It was so interesting. Like, of course. Was that, is that how it is? Like more people really do like Coke that much? Oh, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Pepsi's fucking disgusting compared to regular Coke. Yeah, my friend shared a photo of Trader Joe's all wiped out except for the broccoli kale pizza crust. Right. Uh, no oh, one God. eats that shit. I think people are going to gain more weight during the quarantine. Like, when it's over, we're all just going to come out, like, heavier, fatter, oh, yeah. slower. <laughs> well, they close the gyms, too. <laughs> I was actually at a marijuana dispensary, and um, there was a guy in front of me that bought $2,300 worth of edibles. <laughs> I swear to God. That's his food supply? <laughs> you can't make this shit up. $2,300 worth of edibles. I heard him. He's like, just in case it's the end of the world. I'm like, dude, no matter what happens, you're going to think it's the end of the world. You have $2,300 worth of edibles. Your life is over. Do you guys have toilet paper? Like, have you, were you lucky enough to have to already see it? I'll fucking. I'll use a towel or a tea. Toilet paper is the last there thing you go. I really That's give as a Mexican fuck. as it gets, yeah. right there. Just confirming. I, Viva you, la Mexico, you, right there. Yeah, you'll I, think just, like, I think white people invented that, though. Hey, like, yo, Amish I'll, people would use like the community cloth and like all hey, this. Yo, I'll that. use my hand and uh, <laughs> I'll use a corn tortilla, dog. <laughs> I'll just wait for it to dry and fall off. <laughs> oh, red band. No running. Just, you're not allowed to run your closer here on. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, a crowd appears. <laughs> They crowd surf Red Band out of here like a god. <laughs> crowd surf. More like crowd submarine. He's sinking to the bottom. Of <laughs> Chroma, how are you through all good, this? Good, good, good. I'm, uh, I'm just waiting for, uh, for when Trump's going to start just passing out the toilet paper. Kind of like he was like just shooting hoops with the, uh, with the uh, paper towels back in the day. <laughs> wow, that's a super topical reference. Do it again. Do another joke. Do you want me to do another one? Yeah, this do is I my have... new favorite tradition, just squeezing you for material. Come on, do another one. You got one. What else are you waiting for? <laughs> Don't help him. <them. laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I didn't System of an idiot. <laughs> Nobody prepared for this. There's no way to prepare for a goddamn pandemic. Uh, I know I'm not worried about toilet paper because A, I always have a lot of toilet paper stocked up and B, I use my amazing... Tushy. Yeah, Tushy. I use the promo code KillTony and I spray my ass royally clean. What's funny is if you go to mytushy.com slash KillTony it says, Tony just killed 10% off your order. Goddamn right. It should say Tony sprayed 10% off Can we get a few of those for the band? (laughs) I just got the My Tushy Ottoman that you could also save 10% off. It's kind of like their version of, I guess I shouldn't say the name. Dude, I just got the My Tushy Lazy Boy and it's pretty pretty sick. There you go. I just got the My Tushy butt plug. It feels great. Wow. Thing. There I'm wearing go. it right now. All right. We just lost a uh, loyal sponsor there. No. Thanks a lot, Joel. <laughs> they have kidding. a sense of humor. No, I'm just kidding. Of course they do. They're unbelievable. <laughs> we love Tushy. They write some dirty promos for us, so it's great. Well, uh, here we are, live from the Ice House. We've actually done a show at the Ice House before. It was with uh, the great Joe Rogan, Dom Irera, the late, great Kevin Lee Light, Jesus Christ himself, was our head of security that night. And uh, here we are again, zero audience. And this is their last show ever at the Ice House because they are going to remodel the whole thing. So this is the... 
Wait, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're closing down. When is that happening? Starting yeah. after the show. Really? From yeah. the ice house to the nice house. They are going through a full remodel. But they're going to be a club after, though. Yeah. Just it's for not, like, yeah. it's, it's yes. going to last. It's going to look like the this. bus family. Please right? don't Shout ra- out to the Lakers. Please don't raise the ceilings in here. This is such a good room. All right. Well, there you go. Perfect room. Just to tell you how things bad are in the comedy world, I spent the last two nights at the Ha Ha Cafe. Um, I closed out their show last night. I did 50, 52 minutes. You were on stage last night? Yeah. Wow. I've been on stage every night since the pandemic started. I'll be in Tempe on Thursday. <laughs> no, you won't. No, you won't, <laughs> dude. I'm scheduled at the club. Well, they'll probably cancel it, but I am scheduled right now. Yeah. I literally got a call today that... that my agent said it's still on, and I was like, are you sure? Yeah. No. You drive into that? Yeah. Oh, fuck, dude. I'm not flying to it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These drums well. sound good in this room. <laughs> dude, I'm driving. I'm boring my legs tired. You know what I'm saying? Okie dokie. Uh, this is an exciting time, um, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, we can, uh, what's that? Well, I don't really know. Let's go. Let's take a question from a fan. I have a bucket filled with fan audience questions, and uh, here we go. You guys going to? Uh, you guys gonna play me a little something? All right, here we go. I'm pulling a fan question out of the bucket. Oh my God, that, that's Perfect. a pro wrestling question, Janet. You let a pro wrestling question get in there. My favorite AEW and WWE wrestlers would be Cody Rhodes and Bray Wyatt. That's an easy one. Chroma Chris. Ooh, let's get started with a bang. Chroma Chris, how long have you been playing the guitar and also your favorite song to play? <laughs> get, put your mouth right up to that microphone and tell these people. <laughs> you need for him. It's not even the microphone uh, next to it. Um, I've I'll, been playing for, I would say, maybe... Tw- 20 years Mm. Um, started when I was 16 I don't know uh, that's the math Um, favorite song to play (laughs) all right (laughs) come on I just kind of play my own songs I just like kind of jamming to uh, whatever we're going to be playing for uh, you know next Monday or uh, getting ready for shows you ever play a song to serenade a girl or anything like that like if you're trying to get laid or something what's the what's your go-to if you pick up your guitar and you have one song to play to try to Get a lady interested in you. Hmm. When you're when you're done doing your wacky Trump paper towel jokes and uh, it seems to not be working, you, she's like, "Well, can you play me a song on the guitar?" Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm trying to pull one out of the top of my head. We'll go with "Stand by Me." Whoa, that's a good song. Oh, so sexy, right? right? That's a good one. Ladies. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right, all right, we get it. And the line is going. All right. Okay. Another fun thing that we have here are some questions from some of our uh, favorite comedian guests of the past. Surprise, Ooh. surprise. Oh. Here's one from Benji Aflalo for Joelberg Joel Jimenez. This is an exciting one. So, Benji, one of my great friends, uh, says, Joel. Trump said today, no groups of 10 or more should get together. Does that make the bed you sleep in with all your Mexican cousins illegal? Wow, you guys are like illegal in so many ways. That's what the question says. It just seemed like a writing exercise for Benji. <laughs> um, uh, I, don't, I don't even talk to my cousins, honestly. That would be the worst part of any of that. Uh, How about the any re- Mexican relatives that you live with? You guys all sleep Willy Wonka style, right? No. Honestly, my parents own their house, dude. I get my own room. It's kind of tight. Uh, I'm staying at my girlfriend's for the next two weeks, though. You know you could also get your own room when you have your own apartment. Hey, you know what? My parents need my help, Brian. No. So, um, wh- yeah. yeah my, uh, I'm staying at my, my girlfriend's house. My parents are old and their immune system is deficient. So I'm trying not to be around them. So, uh, well, then who's taking care of them? My nephew. He's there. How old's your nephew? 21. What, what, what makes you think the 21 year old's not going to bring something back? To you your know parents? what? You just didn't out of sight, out of mind, baby. You just didn't want the guilt of killing them yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And wow. Benji, I'll be at your house tomorrow. All right. Benji also had uh, another question. This one's for Red Band. 
Uh, Red Band, okay. bigger Corona concern for you? Being around this many people on tonight's show or going down on your Asian girlfriend? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a test obviously test. it's with you guys because, you know, she's the cleanest girl ever. I Have you ever it. seen an Asian vagina? You see how small she is? That's... It's like fresh. That's like a baby vagina. You ever see a baby okay, vagina? Okay, Red Band. <laughs> Red Band promoting pedophilia. The answer is both. The different, <laughs> no. Oh, My goodness gracious. Wow. This is... Thanks, Benji. There you go. It's Benji Aflalo, yeah. everybody. Hey, you... Benji, are you worried that the Dodgers season is going to be canceled? That's my question to you. Is there a, does anybody have a penny or a nickel? What do you want a penny or a nickel for? It won't fit my girlfriend's vagina if that's what you're going to try to do. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, Chris, do you have a penny or a nickel? You have a key? Very good. Let's do that. Uh, Never mind. We got a quarter. Watch out for that cable. Wow, Ryan J. Belt. Oh, wow. Ryan J. Belt giving a quarter. Ironically, someone's asking for change after a question from... Benji Aflalo. Very interesting. Yeah. Look at that. That worked. Okay. Tony and Red Band. A question. I just pulled a quick one out here. Favorite guest and why? That's a hard one. There's so many. Eventually here, one of the things uh, we might do is have the first ever Kill Tony Awards ceremony, which would be um, best guest, things like that. I could tell you who the nominees would be easily for that. Dom Irera, right? Donnell Rawlings. Um, so interesting. Well, I thought that was one of the best episodes, but a lot of people did not. Well, yeah, they're dumb. When you say people, are you talking about people on the internet? Yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes. Those Bunch of racist people. Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, what are you talking about? I think, uh, you know, well, I'm, I have to say this, but I think Joe Rogan's obviously one of my favorites every time he's on. And, mm-hmm. uh, I really wish we would have Joey Diaz on. It's one person that I yeah, wish. Yeah, we've had Joey have. Diaz on uh, once. Again, I mean. Yeah, it's been good. Ron White, Doug always Benson. good. Oh, Kirk good. Fox, the Sklar Brothers. A lot of good ones out there. Um, and they're all different as far as the why. I mean, Donnell just was absolutely aggressively hilarious throughout his episode. Um, the Sklar Brothers and Kirk Fox always give incredible, complex feedback for the uh, for the comedians that come on stage and uh you know everybody's different in their own special way ron white's so relaxed and chill um there's so many reasons why rogan's always like his like mind's always blown at everything that's happening it's always shows illegal (laughs) right it's always fun to just watch him have fun uh how about you guys you guys have any that stand out to you that we didn't mention you favorite guest moshe kasher is always awesome oh yes of course the great Osha Kasher. Absolutely. Mm hmm. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Everyone else. I like, I like Eric Griffin a yeah. lot. Um, there you go. A little. Uh, did, uh, did you say Ron White? Yep. Okay. That's mine. I, thought, <laughs> I, I, like, I like I like Bert. Uh, his, he adds a lot of energy to to the show that I that I that I like when he's on. But yeah. Uh, uh, I thought uh, I thought Whitney Cummings was really great. That was one of, she was because all the internet trolls were like thinking she was gonna be like a SJW type, and they forget that she's like a comic. And she, right. I thought she came on and was like really it was really fun. Polly, I like Polly a lot because he he's one of those guys who he would sprinkle in these really old stories, but then he'd also give advice every once in a while, but then he'd sit in the pocket and let the show kind of do what it does. And then he would like come in and be like a sniper every once in a while with like Mm -hmm. jokes, which I liked. I do miss having Brody on the show though. He was always Uh, one of my favorites on that, on the show in particular. Of course, one of the greatest guests of all time, without a doubt, the late, great Brody Stevens. I would love to hear his Corona jokes right now. I can't even imagine what they would be like. Yeah. I heard uh, Greg Fitzsimmons the other day. Me, him, uh, he was on one of the uh, Rogan shows. And uh, my God, he came out guns ablaze in five, six, seven new minutes on coronavirus. It was just mind boggling. I love Greg, too. Yep. Good, 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 good. I mean, there's going? so many. Really, the favorite guests are anybody who you've ever seen more than once on the show. That's a pretty easy way to know who the favorite guests are because I get to sort of. 
pick whoever I want, so it's easy to know who Still? is good. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, uh, Tim Dillon, don't forget about that. Oh, my God, yes. Uh, what a crime. By the way, uh, I just Andrew got a Schultz. text from Michael Lehrer. He has uh, he wanted to add to his favorite person that's been on the show, uh, Purse House. <laughs> <The murder. laughs> Is that really Michael Lehrer texting yeah, yeah. you? Oh, that's great. Oh, I love that. Michael Lehrer, please feel free to text in anything that uh, you're thinking throughout this episode. I love it. Uh, right. Speaking of Tim Dillon, we actually had a question get sent in from the great Tim Dillon, oh, everybody. Right. How fun is that? Yeah, Tim Dillon wanted to know what's the biggest fight in uh, the cast history. I couldn't, I couldn't really think of one. Probably in London when you and Brian were arguing over going over to like a Shake Shack and like you wanted to eat like London food and Brian's like, oh, yeah. no, we'll just go there. And then <laughs> right. we're like on the streets of London like... Why don't we just... I'm hungry. Like, Brian, I don't want... We get that in America. And then just screaming. <laughs> we ended up going to Chinatown and having a great meal. Yeah, but that's not the biggest one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, bring it up. That was a baby one. I don't even remember yeah, our baby. I mean, I, think I just wanted to drop that we were at, London. that we're in the back of a taxi cab screaming at each other. At the oh, yeah. Where was I, that? I remember where that was. <laughs> that was New York. New York, after the cameras failed for the surprise oh, guest, Gramercy. Gilbert Gottfried, yeah. in the sold out... <laughs> <laughs> fucking Gramercy yeah, Theater. Yeah. We have no video of that one episode. I, and, and I found out what it was, too. I don't know if I ever said this on a podcast, but a uh, lot, lot of theaters have cameras set up so that when they, they record everything that's in the theater, so say if there's a fire or somebody gets shot, they have like cameras of it. And so when I hit record on it, it started recording, and then they must have been like, you know, with the remote control, hit record on their cameras, and it made my camera turn off because they have the same Sony cameras. Because when I was there, I checked, and they did have Sony cameras. And so it's, it's... It is wild. All the memories, all the chaos. You'd be shocked at how little we fight for being technically a band. Most bands break up uh, very quickly and efficiently and easily. Maybe between you and Bernard, the hotel employee in Milwaukee. Oh, might that have been piece a of shit. That fucking piece of shit. Bernard in Milwaukee from the hotel. If you're watching this, Suck it, dude. go fuck yourself. That was the worst night ever. Worst show. Worst everything. No, right? the show was or fine. Not, no, wait. No, the worst show was that great. Sucked. That was Milwaukee. But the show was, the show was great. Yeah. But leading up to the show sucked. Uh, we sold all the tickets that day. And the guy at the hotel was an asshole. What was the thing? He told me to park the car. I went and parked the car in the rain. And I go, oh, yeah, that's right. I said, um, just to let you know, we parked on a, in like a little side spot there because yeah. it's pouring down rain. Your entire parking lot's filled and we're staying here for two nights. Yeah, we didn't want you to tell us. We're just letting you know. And he goes, okay, well, just write that down for me. And I go, uh, why don't you write it down? <laughs> <laughs> and he goes... What, what do you think I am, your assistant? I go, no, I think you're the guy that works at the fucking hotel front desk. <laughs> and we just kept going back. I think back Tony pointed at his head and goes, you're a loser. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. All right, you can edit all okay. this. <laughs> no, we don't. Oh, we're streaming live? Oh, shit. We don't edit. You guys want to play another song? Let's take another question from a fan here. <laughs> <laughs> Because he was a loser. And he is a loser. Yeah, I found out after that, by the way, I went for the Yelp for that place. This is no joke. And by the way, there was also a comedian that told me, was it called the Blah 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 Hotel? And I go, yeah. They go, I had a problem with that fucking guy. And if you go on the Yelp, I can't remember the name of that hotel, but if you go to the Yelp, there's all these complaints about one that asshole is true. I saw that's it worked too. there for years that fucking is an asshole to everybody. When was the first time Kill Tony did a road show and where? Well, that's not even a question for the cast. That's just a question for Google. I mean, that's pretty easy. These people are morons out here. First road show would probably the road have been show like, would be Toronto or La Jolla. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or maybe Ohio. No. Yeah, no. I don't know. That's an easy one. Had to be in the first 30 episodes. For some reason, my gut tells me Toronto. It might have been Ice House. No, it wasn't the Ice House. We didn't get... Yeah, we didn't do that for a while. But yeah, Toronto, I think. Either Toronto or La Jolla. 
Okay, well, that's good. That's a question for William Montgomery. So I'll tell you what. Why don't we do something fun here um, and uh, bring up a regular, everybody. Yep. And uh, you know him as a very controversial character. People say they love him. People say they absolutely despise him. You never know what you're going to get. And watch the chord when you come up here. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise or really... I guess a couple people in the room can maybe clap. Make some noise for William Montgomery, everybody. Here he is. Here he is. Watch the cord, William. There you go. Oh. Here he is, everybody. William Montgomery. Let's give it up for Jimmy Buffett, Turks and Caicos. Whatever happened to Cotton Eye Joe, Turks and Caicos? I'm waiting for the laughter to subside after that one. Um, <laughs> we're going to love this next one. Uh, what did Rick Moranis tell his wife after he joined ISIS? Um, honey, I blew up the kids. <laughs> Uh, they just released a new bungee jumping video game on VHS. It's super hard. Is it just me or is Major League Baseball way more exciting when cheating is involved? Is it just me or is marriage way more exciting when cheating is involved? William Montgomery, everybody. You did it again. Hell yeah. And in the end, it doesn't even matter. Wow, I you am wiped sick your, as shit. You just wiped your face after wiping. I am wiping. sick as shit. You sick? You just wiped your face. I have a fever. William, you just wiped your face with the same cloth you cleaned the microphone with. Did Do you, the math on that one. I'm sick. How long have you been sick for? Two days. What are your symptoms? I've been in quarantine in a cavern system in Middle Tennessee for two days now. My symptoms are coughing a lot. I have something called pink foot. There you go. Brian's it's, putting on his sleep apnea machine for this. Uh. I have something called pink foot. It's a lot like uh, pink eye, but my foot uh, just itches a bunch. Let's check in with the great Jeremiah Watkins. Uh, can I just say, so we, uh, William and Joel did, uh, we all did a show together at Huntington Beach Rec Room. Oh, yeah. How'd that go? That was fun. It was actually great. There was like a good turnout. There was like 80 people It was too there. many blacks. Okay, William. Okay. Way too many blacks. I don't trust them. I'm from the Dominican Republic. Your best DR. friend is David Lucas. You guys are brothers in cursive. He. <laughs> Okay, go, let's go back to Jeremiah. Don't cut off Jeremiah, William. So the show's going great. William goes up there. The first thing he does, like, he, he is riffing on the previous guy who brought him up, CJ Landry, and it's going well. And the next thing out of William's mouth is he goes, I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm feeling very feverish right now. It I gets, infected. A, shut up, William. It gets absolutely nothing really? from the crowd. And wow. I was dying in the back yeah it was so perfect because the crowd literally looked around like are we at risk right now wow. <laughs> because william just sold it he just he didn't they didn't know him yet no one laughed he's got good acting chops. i it's followed great. it up with i've been going to a bunch of gay bars recently i'm looking for my dad and some bitch in the audience said something and i said what are you a faggot wow there you go a little bit of yeah, uh, I taped the shows, and William didn't ask me for the tape afterwards. <laughs> wow. William, what do you mean I need it? Keep, keep. I need it, Jeremiah. Uh, okay, William. <laughs> sure. I'll Dropbox it to you right I away. I need it. Uh, okay. I'm sick. Yeah, I know. Wow. I, think... I can't feel my feet. Yeah, you have pink foot. Okay. I also so here's call. a question. We I actually can't... we actually have a question for you, uh, William, from a fan. They want to know: Does William wear underwear? And if so, when was the last time they were washed? So answer that question for the I'm fans. I'm actually sponsored by Joe Boxers. 
I get a bunch of money every month from Joe Boxers. I'm. It's funny. Cur- that you, it's funny that you've never mentioned the sponsorship before on the on the main show that you did. I thought tonight I would finally say it. I'm <laughs> sponsored by Joe Boxer. They give me five thousand dollars a month. I'm currently living. <laughs> In a rented out house in Malibu, I don't know how to turn the alarm off. I'm constantly walking in the front door. The alarm starts going off. There you go. All right. Very good. Uh, so what else has been going on in life? What are you doing in your real life uh, since uh, this coronavirus thing has happened? I, we know you're not quarantined in a cavern. Are you still working in the storage unit, William? I am still working like, there. Like I right actually, now after with everything that's going I on? I work there today. I hope none of my uh, superiors see this. I'm thinking Thursday I'm going to pretend being sick you so have I pretend. can have it a week off. You can just say you just don't feel comfortable working, and I think that's a legit thing to say to somebody. That Someone you're... today literally at the storage unit place, he argued with me over how much he owed and then he told me he was just at the doctor because he had a fever last night. And the doctor said he didn't have a fever. It scared me. Huh. There's no joke to that. It scared me. I might have COVID right now. It's weird. I have a, a cousin, Taylor, COVID. He's in the Turks and Caicos. He is a, a black person. He's a big fan of Jimmy Buffett. Huh. Very good. I know they closed all the gyms. Uh, did you, when your parents flew out here to get your gym membership, did you get to go to the gym at all? I was able to uh, pump some iron, and by that I mean sit out in my vehicle and look up videos of engineering feats. Another question for you, William. This one came in from my actual, uh, the only person to ever get a standing ovation for a set on their way to the stage and after their set, my mother, Mrs. Hinchcliffe, sent in a question, what sent in said. a few questions actually, and one of them was for William Montgomery. My mom wanted to know, did you go to a real doctor or Dr. Seuss? <laughs> <laughs> she actually wrote that, she's unbelievable. Well, I didn't know. I went into the doctor with a messed up arm, and then the doctor said, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. Your arm looks broken. Going to need a stint. Well, that was a good one. Hey, there it is. I'm kidding. No, I went to a real doctor, though. (laughs) There you go. William, did you choke while you said Did you hear that? Right. I'm sick right now. Dude, go. that choke killed me. I'm what? sick. Yeah, if there was an audience in here, I would have had to pause for two minutes. Yeah. No, it's For the true. laughter on that one. That's hey, true. Can you wink at a few of them, William? The people that are in yeah. here? Give wink, them a few wink weeks. for the listeners. Is this the best camera that we have up on, uh, on William? Hey, David, fucking fix it, you bitch. That's great. We'll zoom in and post or something. David, I'm kidding. Whoa, what was that? All right. Is well. that from The Purge? That's so great. This is the weirdest fucking episode ever. I, like I love it. Oh, you think so? You think the episode with no audience is the weirdest one, Joel? Wow, what a hot take. Creative genius. Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez. Just let it run, bitch. Who is that? Is that Come David on, Dierry? faggot. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm oh, kidding. That's a uh, joke. Thing I'm working on. <laughs> I'm not actually homosexual, but I found if you say faggot during a set, there's oh a God. chance people will laugh. That is true. What's the most homosexual thing you've ever done in your life, William? I kissed a guy. Yeah, when did that happen? Two weeks ago, I was in a hot tub. I started making out. He touched my penis. I touched his. And then what happened? He said peanuts. I had to, yeah, peanuts. That's just peanuts. Huh? Keep going, keep going, William. And then what happened? I had to fly to the Turks and Caicos the next day. I was jet lagged to say the. Okay, there Michael. He is. Michael Lehrer has a has something to say about oh, yeah. what William's dad pumped his sperm into two eggs and ham. There you go. Can I read you all a poem by Shel Silverstein? I love. Uh, you have that. God damn it, my phone's over there. 
You have that all queued up? It's okay. Maybe we can do it later. Why don't you sit on the? Uh, why don't you sit down and join us on the uh, on the edge of can the I? stage there? Yeah, just sit in front of Joel's drum set over there. Let's so do that. I noticed that you're drinking a Seven just Up. That's this, absolutely uh, not Seven Up. It is uh, absolute and Seven Up. Here, put the put the mic back. Absol- <laughs> put the mic back in the mic stand there, and grab a seat. Just sit on that ledge right in front of Joel's drums it's over there. Seven you're gonna be up. right in the frame. It's seven be fucked beautiful. up. I like that. There you go. How about how about another hand? Look at that. Look how cute he is. How about another hand for William Montgomery? <laughs> Good question from the fans. Cosby, Louis Schumer. Fuck, Mary, kill. Wow, that's go. easy. Absolutely. I would, uh, I would, well, yeah, I don't know how easy this is, actually. Um, actually, no, yeah, I might, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's pretty hard. You would think the fuck one would be easy here since there's one that is a rich woman. I'd fuck Cosby, dude. Give him a taste of his own medicine, dude. I think so, right? Well, actually, his own medicine is, I believe, horse tranquilizer. <laughs> Fuck Mary Kill. Red Band, what do you got on this? I one? would definitely fuck Schumer and marry uh, Louis and kill Cosby. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, because Cosby's about to die anyway. That's why you would want to marry Cosby. You marry him, get all that extra money that he's got. I want to marry Louis. I bet he would be a good partner. Well, there you go. There you go. How about you guys? Do you have a hot take on this? Fuck Mary Kill? Anything like that? I know Jeremiah's too. After Je- well, go Jesse, ahead. you're a, you're a woman. I want I want a woman's perspective yeah, on this. I did. Were you saying you would marry Cosby because he's in jail, right? No, I would marry <laughs> Louis. Well, no, you would. Yeah, and seem- kill Cosby. Oh yeah. And, and fuck. And that I would dirty say, I, pussy. There you go, Brian. Very good. And I said you would marry Cosby because he's about to die, so maybe there's a bunch of money to be made there. Marry Louis, I think, is the. No brainer here. Best personality. I'd marry Amy just because the whole masturbation thing. What's the masturbation thing? With Louie. Oh, you don't like that? <laughs> that doesn't turn you on at even a little? No. What if you like fell in love? Well, you don't think that would be hot if like he just masturbated for you? I don't think he'd like it if I liked it. Whoa. Jesse, 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 <laughs> Jesse. That's a really good point. I got a text from one of our uh, one of our uh, cousins of the show, the great Trey. We all know and love Trey. He comes with us on the road a lot, and he reminded me that Ari and Sam are also two of the greatest guests in the show history. Also, Big J Okerson, Shane Gillis. Really, basically, like I said, anyone who's on the show more than once is uh, lands immediately into best guest. Territory. The Gramercy show with Shane and Big J was one of my favorite times Good ever. Good lord, that was crazy. Nobody saw that coming either. Kept him top secret. Gilbert Gottfried we had on one of those episodes. Mark Normand on one of those episodes. Always, always incredible over at the Gramercy. William, you okay? What's wrong, William? <laughs> I heard we have to answer a riddle from him before we leave the stage y'all, tonight. Y'all did the... Uh, Go ahead. Y'all did the... Go ahead, William. It's okay. That's pretty funny. If, be, if there were an audience, they left. Yeah, well, the camera is I would, so uh, incredibly far away that nobody can see what's sex with the lady who wore all red. Uh, her last name was a city in California. Carmen San Diego. Oh, you did? There he goes. William Montgomery, everybody. What an exciting time. Oh, also Holtzman. Uh, someone that always sits oh, yeah, in the yeah. front row. The great, great Joy Eileen just texted me. Brian Holtzman. Absolutely. Instant you know, legend. Brian just told me a story that after the Holtzman show where I battled Isaiah from Black Flag, I did the backflip off the table. After the show was over, Holtzman came up to Brian and he said, did you see that guy do a backflip? Anyway, if because uh, wow. obviously he saw it because he was there and uh, Holtzman's a... There you go. I love you. I love you, Brian, and also Brian. Speaking of best guests ever, there's only been three in the show's history that have ever done one minute on this show. 
Uh, one of those being the great Dom Irera. I figured we could all sit here like professionals and watch that minute. The first ever minute by a guest in the history of Kill Tony was from Dom Irera. You can roll number two for me there, Chris. And this is it. This is what it looked like. It happened super organically following a set. That's a, that's a, oh yeah, oh yes. Wait, hold on. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's number three. Yep, number three. Very good. Thank you, Chris. Happened organically following a set after the great Sarah Weinshank out of nowhere in the belly room, I do believe. Yep, in the belly room. (laughs) Did you want to do a minute? Yeah, here's my intro. Okay, here's Dom Dom Irera. Wait, no, wait. There's a guy who's been auditioning here since the comedy store opened. Mm -hmm. He's very close to passing. (laughs) This is a friend of the club, Uh Razor. Okay. Razor. Ladies and gentlemen, your final comedian of the night has been performing here, auditioning here, since it was the op- since the club opened in 1972. He's very close to being passed. Uh, put your hands together for Razor. Everybody. Razor! Thank you. What's up, what's, what's up with turtles? I mean, you know, uh, they're like this, and I'm thinking, pick up the pace. Uh, uh, you ever you ever notice you ever on a bus and and, and you and you you mean to pull your stop and you forget it and then you pull it two blocks later and you have to walk back don't you hate that uh, anyway you know it's it's amazing because I, I was at my my uh, my cousin's christening and I was really killing and my my aunt said that I should be a comedian and that's why I'm here and I thank you for staying. Uh, and I, I, I appreciate you all looking at me. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how people climb up Mount Everest when it's already been done? I'm thinking, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, razor, uh, razor, everybody. <laughs> Couple. That was it. That's what it looked like. The first ever time that a comedian did a minute on Kill Tony. A first ever time that a guest did a minute. Watch that chord there, William. William's back. Did you get your phone? Did you? I have been watching a movie about a car that when he talks, he uses his headlights. It's called Herbie the Lubbock. Okie dokie. There he is. Hey, I wanted to ask you something, William. Yeah. I noticed that you post a lot of videos of you watching old TV shows uh, at late at night. Do you have cable or are you one of those guys that have the antennas that watch like weird, you know, TJ Hooker? Antenna. And, yeah, that's what I thought. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's take another question from a fan. How are you guys doing over there? How's the band doing? Jeremiah, are you good? All right. Let's take another question from the fans. Here we go. Ooh. This is a good one. I like this one. This is a question for Jeremiah or Jesse or both. Any good marching band stories? That's a good question. You guys are both in marching bands, according to this fan. I didn't even know that. Is that true? Nerds. You guys are both in marching bands? Red Band thinks it's nerdy that you guys marched or moved in any direction whatsoever. I not only marched, Red Band. I was the drum major my senior year. (laughs) Oh, look at that. He and doesn't know I anything about majors. Brian likes minors. Yeah. <laughs> See that? There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, go ahead, Jesse. Give us a good marching band story. Well, American I, Pie style. What's American Pie? Well, one time I shoved my trumpet up my pussy. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> That's what Auga. I was saying. <laughs> and when I pushed it out, it went. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a trombone to me. That's the story everybody always wants. Anything good from a uh, marching band, though? Anything crazy ever happen? Not really. Um, in high school, I was seeing this guy who was in my section, and I gave him a hand job on the bus. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. I think you just took Jeremiah's story from him. Hello. Same guy. Oh, look at that. Did he, did he finish? Did you finish no. until completion? <laughs> no, I was really bad at it. Wow. You know, really? Like can 16. you get, <laughs> what, what do you think was so bad? Well, can you give an example just of like what that hand job was like? 
just a lot of mashing. <laughs> mashing? Squeezing. Mashing? <laughs> like, it was, was it a flat-handed hand job? A lot of fingernails. <laughs> oh, oh, no. What? All right, how about you, Jeremiah? You have a... You have one? Uh, I was not a marching band, uh, but I played in uh, like grade school band, and also I played in the band in, uh, <laughs> in my church. And uh, Oh, yeah. Give us a church band story. <laughs> we know those are the good ones. Yeah. I went to a Catholic school. I know what goes on over there. Uh, I don't remember too many wild things necessarily happen because they were just like old hymnals and stuff that we <laughs> were playing. <laughs> so I remember a lot of those creepy. Fucking, Do you? Oh, my God. Well, they, they kind of get stuck in your head. Oh, yeah. That's the whole point. They're yeah. Like, you, you know. What? Oh, wait. William probably knows a lot. Come on, He's William. Religious. Sing us a uh, sing us a church hymn yeah. that you remember. They used to make us sing them. Even the non-Catholics at my school, they would Turks force... and Caicos. Go ahead, William. Sing the song. Lord, I lift your name on high. <laughs> Lord, I love to sing your praises. <laughs> you know this? Sing it with them. I'm Lord, so I lift glad your you're name in my on... life. Who's messing that up? I'm Lord, so I glad you came to your save presence. us. Amen. Jesus is my God. I'm standing here tonight <laughs> to worship you. I think I am sick with the virus, God. Please help me tonight. All right, all right, all right. That's enough. Wow. wow. Unbelievable. We just got word that you sang so well to Jesus that the rain has stopped and coronavirus has ended. There's an audience. Let the audience in, everybody. It turns out Jesus exists. We are finding out live here on Kill Tony that Jesus is real, and he's responding to those prayer songs. <laughs> Incredible. Uh... There you go. There's your one fart for the episode. Brought to you by Death Wait, Squad I did, Productions. I did, okay. Can I just ask Brian the logic behind that one? Was that supposed to be Jesus <laughs> Dude, that's farting? That's Jesus farting. There you go. Jesus absolutely farted. If it, there, <laughs> might, there might be an eight-year-old listening to this episode that is cracking up right now. What, what's hilarious is that Jesus farted a lot, I bet. He probably had a lot of farts. Heck yeah, after that last supper. Come on, all that bread and wine. <laughs> no, you kidding how do you think he wa- How do you think he walked on water? It was like a jet ski. <laughs> hey, he just walked hey, yeah, hundred of them. Look at that. He just blasted <laughs> off that cross, dude. <laughs> that's how it, that's how he got his name. He farted one time. Someone was like, "Jesus Christ!" <laughs> <laughs> hey, that that that'll stick. Oh, I I just get an applause <laughs> break in an empty room. You need to start doing farts. Like, <laughs> oh that's my like god! A, be, like a that's Brian a, Regan joke. That was great. That's incredible. Okay, let's keep this fun train moving along. Speaking of applause breaks and uh, good jokes, uh, we have another regular here, ladies and gentlemen. Believe it or not, these guys are willing to come up here and fucking dish it out because these are goddamn warriors. Uh, The great Michael Lair could not make it here tonight, but he's made it to every road episode. This guy made it to two shows in Ventura, two shows in La Jolla. Michael Lair has got the night off tonight. He's just texting in. Uh, but however, there is one other regular and, uh, you know, him, you love him. Unbelievable writer, unbelievable roaster. Make some goddamn noise for the great David Lucas. Everyone here he is. Watch that cord, David. Be careful up there. Hell yeah. Hey, hey Brian, turn the, uh, one minute off. I'm gonna do something a little different. Oh shit. If, uh, Chroma Chris can help me out. I got you, dog. Yeah. We got something special for y'all. During this quarantine. (laughs) Well, she said it's cold outside (laughs) and she hands me my raincoat. She's always worried about things like that. Well, she said it's all gonna end and it might as well be my fault. 
And she only sleeps when it's raining. And she screams, and her voice is strained. And she says, baby, it's 3 a.m., I must be lonely. And she says, baby, well, I can't help but scared of that all sometimes. But the rain's going to wash away, I believe it. Well, she's got a little bit of something. I got is better than nothing. In a color portrait world, she believes that she's all got it all. She swears the moon don't hang quite as high as it used to. And she only sleeps when it's raining. And she screams, and her voice is strained. And she says, baby, it's 3 a.m., I must be lonely. Well, heaven, she says, baby, oh, yeah. Well, I can't step in it at all sometimes. But the rain's going to wash it away, I believe, yes. Wow. <laughs> Fucking beautiful. Hell, yeah. Red I Band and I were checking out this stream comments I during up some that. Of the words. People saying that you cure your this is cure for depression, cure more for of this depression. every week. Yes. This is yes. exactly what we needed, exactly what we wanted. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, that's from Michael Lair. Michael Lair, he has two comments. Shouldn't David be this is from Michael Lair. Shouldn't David be guarding Sandra Bullock's blind side? <laughs> <laughs> And he said your comedy special is going to be called 10 Pounds of Shit in a 5-Pound Bag. Oh, God. Uh, Why Jesus. am I getting fucking Michael roasted by Professor of- X? <laughs> <laughs> William has something he wants to say. It's called sure. a substitute brother, teacher, it's X. It's called a drive-by. <laughs> <laughs> your brother David, in cursive, William David, Montgomery. David, this is a, uh, a roast joke from my father, Larry. Oh. Uh, he says, David Lucas may never roast you, but if he does, say... I see a lot of Denzel Washington in you. No, seriously, did you swallow Denzel Washington? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Mr. Larry, you look like Freddy Krueger's daddy. Oh, (laughs) shit. (laughs) For anybody who's seen him. Oh, shit. (laughs) We actually had another one of the great guests uh, of the show's history um, ask a question. This is for you, David Lucas. What up? It is from Donnell Rawlings. Oh, shit. And he said, uh, you okay? Hey, Donnell. Hey, when they first saw the coronavirus, they looked under the microscope and they seen yo ashy ass. Shut the fuck up, boy. Looking like you got bit by a bat, nigga. Shut your black ass up, boy. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's weird, Rosa. No f- Michael <laughs> Lehrer just wrote, uh, tell David to wear his hoodie so a racist murders him. Wow, Jesus. There you go. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Here, Wait, bro. Don- Donnell actually sent in a... He's uh, just mad because when his leg itch, he can't feel it. Don Donnell actually sent in a, uh, a response here. Uh, <laughs> hold on it. a second. Let's see what he had to say. This is uh. There you go. There you go. It's all happening here. What this is, is from Donnell Rawlings. There you go. That's it. You can cut it there. There you go. That's it. That's can I roast his picture? If you want to, you have a bunch of pent up Donnell jokes that you didn't get out. Nah, it's different when like yeah, you might as well save it. Yeah, you might as well save it. He made a whole podcast about me. I feel special. He gave me like three thousand new fans, though. Of course, yeah, Yeah, Donnell's the fucking man. And and and, and again, and get that squeaky ass Benz truck fixed, nigga. He's got a squeaky truck. Hell yeah, he got a Benz truck and a brake squeak. My goodness gracious. <laughs> so let's talk about this uh, coronavirus and how it's affecting you. I know that the gym closing isn't affecting you at all. Uh, <laughs> how's it going going to the grocery store right now? Uh, Amazon Fresh. Oh, your Amazon. What are you talking about? They, they don't have any delivery dates. What are yes, you talking about? Yes, they do, bro. Not I just got me. delivery today. I've been trying every I got one day. from. I got one from, because you live in Burbank. That's probably why. Yeah. Studio City, baby. We're a little better. Michael Lair just wrote... God's killing me, honey bun's killing you. Okay, you don't have to... <laughs> let, let me read the text there, uh, Brian. Goddamn, Speedy no, really bad. No, it's okay. <laughs> Speedy really bad So how, how's the coronavirus changed your life? It What's, hasn't. It hasn't at nope. all? 
What have you been doing? Shit. Same shit. What do you mean? What's the same shit? I got on stage Saturday. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You came later, though. Me and Red Band killed a uh, ha-ha. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I'm flying out to uh, New York Wednesday. You're really going to the Why? Big Apple? We fucking with Luis J. Gomez. His shows ain't canceled. It's going to be. <laughs> I know. I'm fucking, we're going to do the podcast, though. You nice. know, so we're going to have some fun. You're going and, all the way to New York to do a David. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I mean, that's it the cord good. that you're the producer. You literally put that cord there and uh, you just tripped on it. Why, why are you going to go there just for a podcast? Though? Like, you might no, get stuck some, there. I, I got some other shit going on there, too. Oh. Yeah, I don't really talk about big plans until they fold out. You know, that's how I go. My goodness gracious. Uh, my mom actually asked a question. Oh, that's for my baby. As well, absolutely. Hey, she, William, stop that shit, nigga. What's he doing? Is he touching on my cow. <laughs> what do you think? You're in a hot tub right now? <laughs> My mom asked a serious question. She wants to know, what do you eat? We know you're a pescatarian. What else do you like to eat when you're not eating fish? I talked uh, last week about how good your salmon was. It is incredible. Shit. Ever since I got on Kill Tony, I've been on a health kick lately. <laughs> really? Probably, yeah, I'm probably like uh, 21 pounds lighter from when I first started. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I, was, I was like 388. I'm like 363 now. You're just roasting off the calories. Hell I yeah, love bro. It. You know what I'm saying? So I intermittent fast. Uh, the first thing that I eat uh, or drink, however you look at it, uh, the first thing that I drink around like one is uh, uh, juices. Like I do beet juice, celery. I'm about to hit this nigga with this thing. <laughs> 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 this shit weird. Is, <laughs> is that true? You taught you. Do that nigga look like he taught me about any kind of juice unless? David, square up to the camera here. Square up to the. That camera. motherfucker taught me about orange juice and vodka. That's what. <laughs> David, you went from Air Jordans to Air Fryers. Nah, nigga. Air Fryers. Yeah, oh. They're healthier. You make, yeah. you know, wings and stuff healthier. Yeah, but I don't eat fish, bro. I don't. Uh, so, yeah, the first meal I normally eat is something blended, uh, like beet juice, celery juice, mm-hmm. mixed with some uh, almond butter and shit. And that's what my, my first meal. Then I eat something after I get from the gym. Like uh, like today I had uh, salmon and uh, bell peppers and a piece of pita bread and some hummus. Wow. Yeah. Look at you. Yeah. Just one piece of pita bread? Yeah, nigga. What do you, <laughs> <laughs> why do you have to call me the n-word at the end of that because you're my nigga because you know that you had one more one no only had one slice you had one slice of bread one sheet have you look at it it's the sheets my goodness not the pita bread the the little you know the sheet lavash yeah that stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah one sheet yeah wow one sheet yeah. like a bed sheet yeah <laughs> <laughs> My goodness gracious, David. So you're going to New York City. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Michael still going? Yeah, he's sending him in. He we, said, we really uh, got a rose. He really think this He is said, God's killing him, but honey buns are killing you. We heard that. What's the next one? I say Entenmann's, but I don't want to go too highbrow for David. That's what you've been eating. And he said, your whole life, you've been going intermittently fast. Uh, I don't know. Uh, he it's, might get, it's getting there, Michael. It would have <laughs> took you. I heard you're going to New York because you have a date with a little white woman at the top of the Empire State Building. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, bro. Uh, what are you gonna? What else are you gonna do in New? What is, is there anything you're gonna do for fun? Well, my meetings have been canceled. Uh, I ain't gonna really do shit for fun, man. Like I'm all about business, right? And further in my career, like fun happened later. That's um, right. So yeah. I'm really just going to do a whole bunch of podcasts, meet with some people. And then bring my ass back. Hopefully, I don't get stuck over there if they quarantine me or cancel flights. I, I agree. I got a question. You eat pretty healthy. What's like your like fucking like bad shit that you like to eat? Yeah, when you like to guilty uh, eat your face that way. And it's like healthy. like today, I ate uh, two pizzas, two slices, not two whole pizzas. Oh, <laughs> truth comes out. Uh, I would say, I would say the bad thing that I like to eat would probably be like uh, fried fish, because like. If I'm going to go bad, I'm going to go all the way bad, so I'm not going to do, like, air, fr- air fryer. Can I, can I tell everyone out, all 30,000 people watching from the Turks and Caicos with their swimming pants on, David, I want to tell everyone tonight, when you invited me over to your apartment, I made out with your baby mama. I didn't care. I took my swim trunks off. I... She saw my penis. It was inverted into my tummy. 
I had webbed feet, I had Tevas, I had goggles, I had swim caps, I had you name it, I had it. She was talking to me, David, my only point to you is right now, when you go to New York and you're hollering at young ladies, just remember me hollering at your young lady. Wow, look at that. Hey, Will, you one guy I wouldn't mind my baby mama fucking. Because <laughs> I ain't got shit to do. Do you lose. believe that? Hell yeah, I know she's still coming back. David, <laughs> what are the... What are the chances of you and I having sex with some girl we meet off the streets just both raw dogging her <laughs> with reckless abandon? I'm drinking my 7-Up and vodka, not giving a fuck, just slapping her around. You say, William, you have to stop. You're going to kill her. And I keep hitting her in the face. David, I just hope that happens. <laughs> she would have to be black. That's the only girl. I, I can't do a threesome with a white girl because they might holler rape. William, have you ever had sex with a black girl before? I'm trying to get this black girl to fuck him, but she saw his picture. <laughs> That's all it takes. You, no, but seriously, what do y'all think? Could I pull it off? Nah, nigga, you got no I have a very average-sized penis. I have webbed feet. Uh-huh. I have to wear earplugs. Do you really I have web feet? Get... You said it like 30 times that, to no, the point where I want to see those I, feet. I, I've asked before, and I've actually seen them on this show. He was wearing, uh, he's, he, has a, he has a knack for wearing Crocs, and I asked to see his webbed feet. He pulled it out, and I pretended like they were webbed, but they were very, but very. But y'all just, they, y'all just. However, pre- they, they did look like hobbits' feet, like they were very hairy and unkempt. But would y'all watch that movie, just David and I just remixing the Herbie the Love Bug movie, and David and I... Maybe if you grow some double. eyebrows. Whoa. What the fuck do you mean, Red Band? You know exactly what I did. I've had my I, best fucking set. We got No, not with those eyebrows. I've gotten you sick tonight, bitch. Yeah, I just saw the spit fly on my nose. <laughs> I'm sick tonight, All Red right, Band. William, sit, sit. There you go. Sit back down, William. William old crazy uh, David's ass. fucking brave, grabbing that after. Dude. Come on. What are you the? What are you the fun <laughs> police over here? <laughs> back to you in the studio. Michael, you have there. another antibacterial wipe. Right. Hold on. Uh, David's shirt. This is from Michael Lair. <laughs> David's. <laughs> David's shirt says champion. That's true. David's shirt says champion. He deserves an award for getting it over his shoulders. There you go. Absolutely. He says that you put the meat in meetings. I agree with that. Uh, Michael. Uh, What's going on? Just watch that cord, guys. Is everything okay? <laughs> William, what's going on? What's the problem? I think William gonna... pushed David right now. Two weeks ago, I had sex with David's cousin in the Philippines. Okay, William. We all right. There goes William. I just sanitized the mic. David, why don't you grab a seat next to uh next to William? Here, and just and just keep David that. Deary. Take that mic stand and uh, the microphone with you, and just sit down there next to William. Watch that cord. Watch that cord right there. There you go. There you go. Hey, motherfucker! What are you doing? William, stop! William, stop horse playing around. Stop horsing. <laughs> oh, he's stop. winking Whoa, at the us. Wink. <laughs> no, Whoa. Okay. He's all amped up over here. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. William, give the microphone to David. He'll use it responsibly. (laughs) Reckless over there. William thinks he had a Dean Dog show right now. Oh, wow. This is another question from a fan. This is actually for William. You could answer it pretty quickly and easily. William, are you having a boy or a girl? I am having an abortion. Oh, wow. I had sex with a Filipino girl three years ago. No, we heard that already. Hand it back to David. Okay, this is another question. Okay, there you go. Okay, yeah, we don't. Yeah, there you go. Another question. This is for everybody. Ass or tits? I like both. But I'm going to pick ass on this one. Red band? Ass. Yeah. There you go. I'm going to go ass. Oh, wow. We're all ass so far. Jeremiah, I believe you're an ass, man. I like boobs. Whoa, look at that. 
My goodness. He answered that like he's still at Christian band camp. <laughs> I like memories. Uh, how about Jesse? Uh, Big penis. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Absolutely. Chroma? Obviously ass. Yep, definitely. Yeah. David? Uh, titties if it's a one-night stand. But long-term, you need an ass? ass yeah. Yep. How about William? I am a fan of uh, that milk that is not too high in fat. I think it's called skim milk. I met some <laughs> Filipino bitch. Uh, okay, there you go. Back Wait, to David. Janice, ass or tit? <laughs> well, that's yeah, that's, that's, that's a tough one. She has both to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she has both. Yeah, you lucky son of a bitch. Okay, this one's more on the show. Let's go to Joelberg, Joel Jimenez. Favorite Mexican drum off of all time. First one that pops in your head. Uh, probably. Oh man. Um. Uh. Damn, this is a hard one. Uh. Against Isaiah from Black Flag, that was really awesome. That uh, was awesome. Any, but uh, Australia, the one I did the backflip in Australia was pretty. Uh, yeah, legendary. that was crazy. Yep, and this is incredible. The bucket of destiny has fed us two drum off questions in a row. Joel, have you ever felt like you lost a Mexican drum off before? <laughs> Every time, dude. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I. Uh, um. Yeah, for sure. A couple. A couple of times, there are people who are technically really gifted i'm not like the most technically gifted drummer but i think that uh i'm i am seriously willing to die so i think that um in the grand scheme of things no but if we're talking uh case by case yeah there 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 could be a case made that some people are technically better than me but they're not better than me in the uh grand scheme of things so you're saying some people drum better than you, but you come in with the comedic edge and uh, yeah, dominate I, I, over I the Yeah, I bring top. the whole show. They might be better technically, but they can't fuck with me as far as uh, what I bring to the stage. I agree. I agree with that 100%. Um, one of the questions that I'm going to ignore is who's the funniest in the whole group? Shout out to the All trolls. All of us. Yes, absolutely. I agree 100%. Everyone is the funniest. I was going to say Chroma Chris. Everybody plays, <laughs> everybody plays their role. Absolutely perfectly. Um, this is a really interesting one. I've, uh, I've wondered when this question would be asked on the show and why not for this special coronavirus episode with so many just diehard fans watching. Uh, where did singing Jumper to the band's music come from? Now, this is actually a pretty complex answer for me because sometimes, as you'll notice, even though I don't do it Every episode, like I did for a long time now, I will sometimes sing Jumper because well, it's a two-pronged answer here. One is that uh, it used to somewhat bother Jeremiah that I would sing the wrong song to whatever <laughs> song they were playing. And sometimes I understand because the tempo, you know, it fucks with his tempo because he's trying to play a song and it, you know, it goes against the tempo of the song that he's playing. There you go. Yes, Red Band. Uh, yes, that would that would make sense. That would singing a song that's not the song that they're playing would bother them. And uh, and so if you look for things, it's a it's actually multifaceted answer. That's p in role. So it'll usually happen if Jeremiah does something to purposefully annoy me. It'll usually happen after that. Or sometimes I'll do it after somebody has a horrible set. In my opinion, that's usually what sets it off because I'm sort of saying like. You know, you should think about killing yourself. And uh, and also, in a weird way, I always think it's an interesting, in my own little brain, I think it's an interesting, funny way to pay homage to the late, great Stephen Brody Stevens, who committed suicide because I believe that song in some ways about suicide awareness or something, right? So, yeah, there you go. Let's check in with William Montgomery, who I'm guessing is going to tell us I, he had sex I with a Filipino girl. The first time my parents were on Kill Tony, uh -huh. my father and Brody, they hit it off. They were both pitchers, but I specifically remember that evening I started off my set with, so I'm single, I'm holding out for a black or an Oriental. Okay, William, hand it back to David. Hand it, hand it back to David. There you go. There's Brody. <laughs> Jeremiah? I, uh, my recollection of how it started is very similar, but it, it, it came from multiple times of you just not knowing the lyrics to certain songs like in general, so then you would just start singing that instead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah. Yeah, 
And then yeah. I just thought it was silly. I just thought it was a little what Red Band would call an Easter egg to sort of hide in there. Just yeah, to yeah, see yeah, if people for sure. Were paying attention because, like, I think it became kind of a thing that I realized, like, on um, w- with different songs we were playing, that like you didn't know the words to a decent amount of songs, so then you would start injecting that song yeah. in there to replace it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who can do the most push-ups? My bet on this one would be former Marine. Is it was it a Marine? What were yeah. you? I cannot do push-ups anymore. You can't? No, I'm not very good. But at fun it. fact, Chroma Chris did fight for America. We were hey, a United States up. Marine. Don't get it twisted. Da- David Lucas wears the camouflage, but uh, Chroma, <laughs> Chroma we, Chris. Yeah, we did more I do pull- push-ups. It, it was more pull-ups than push-ups. You want to do some push-ups? You really want to? Go ahead, William. Lay right across. Lay right across this table hey, here. Can we, do you have somewhere? Not the table. This floor right here. Don't trip on any cords. Lay. Yep. That way. Hey Tony, way. I got a question. Yep. William thinks he can beat me in arm wrestling. Can we get that table? Absolutely. Up nope. next, you guys. Well, wait, 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 wait. I'd rather see that. Yeah, Will. Say wait, wait William, 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 Will, William, William, William. <laughs> yes, you Save can. Save your energy. You think you can beat me yeah. in arm wrestling? You guys set up a table here, and uh, let's have a little arm wrestling match. Uh, the first ever kill Tony. I mean, David Lucas is – watch that cord. Watch that cord. There you go. David da- – uh, here, you guys come up here. David, you help set this up. We have a, another question. Whatever whatever. happens, William, don't get so, – don't, yep. don't get so into it that you turn your hat around backwards. Just watch that cord, please. Because that will unlock a uh, William Montgomery that we've never seen before. This is very exciting. The first ever Kill Tony arm wrestling match. Whoa! Oh. He turned the hat backwards. The hat I got, backwards. I got all the money in the world on David Sylvester Lucas. Sylvester Stallone guys. style. You. Does, huh? any, does anybody I got five have, on David Lucas. On. Does any... <laughs> Does anybody yeah, have William? Both gonna pass out in two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think William might actually surprise us. Whoa! Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> I need to do that. Okay, hold on. Let's just keep it nice and low. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Joel's Joel's gonna hold on. And when I say, okay, you guys good? You guys like your position? All right. Ready, set, go. <laughs> William totally, William totally tried to cheat there. <laughs> no. Okay, okay, okay. No, it's okay. It's. Uh, <laughs> it's <not even> happening. <laughs> William's just trying to cheat to win wow. here. Kill Tony Arm. <laughs> <He tried. laughs> David, help hey, Janice, us. Janice, oh, you want to see Janice? William, do it? William, Watch the cord. You, Watch the cord. William, do you think you can beat anybody else on stage? Joel? Joel, I think. Oh, okay. Here we go. No, no. Let's let, let's let William. Uh, let's see what happens here with William. I'm going to pull. All right, all right, here we go, here we go. Ready, set, go. Oh, come on, Joel. Oh, Joel, conserving energy here. Whoa. Wow. I'll do it. I'll go up against you, William. I'm extremely Here, strong. let me try to do it. Whoa! I'm sorry, all the blood I have is in my dick. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Red band. <laughs> Ready, set. What are you afraid of? <laughs> oh! Ready, all right, set, I want a rematch. <laughs> oh, it's incredible. <laughs> Dude, Brian just almost <laughs> broke William's wrist. <laughs> okay, Jeremiah, favorite character you've ever done? Great question from the fans. Broad and beautiful question. Very hard. 
I mean, I that's another one where like I have like you guys don't worry about that. Let David Deary grab all that stuff. You go sit back down. Oh, William, you can't. William, don't. <laughs> he's fucking with you, David. <laughs> Just sit down, William. William, sit down. Relax. Good grief. <laughs> Favorite. William, sit. William, sit down and shut up. This isn't Brothers in Cursive. Shut the fuck up. Sit down. <laughs> I'm going to choke you to sleep, dude. Uh. I have, well, okay, there's so many at this point that it's very, very difficult to say the favorite one I've ever played, but I'll, I'll, I have different categories for which reasons why I like certain ones. And the like uh, top five for me uh, are uh, Jeff Foxworthy, uh, Nose Rogan, and, uh, and also... Uh, when we did Full House uh, with Doug Benson, those were like impression wise, those were my favorite ones that are like impressions of people. Kid Rock. Kid in, Rock. Uh, I like Kid Rock. That was in Indiana. Yeah. Anthony Kiedis, a legend. Kiedis. Very good, David Deary. Um, I like some, some, sometimes I, I like certain ones. Like um, one of my favorites is actually Jack the Ripper because that character is so. I'm Jack the Ripper crazy and it makes no sense that a serial killer would be saying his own name over right. and over yeah uh which i like that uh a lot just as like an original even though that's based on like a real person i just like that as an original character and then um uh there's there's a there bunch of go. i got a weird one characters that, that i'm always uh, impressed when we're like in a country and you're doing their accent like we weren't when we were in manchester and you did the um the lawyer with the british accent and like actually Make it happen, and they like it. That shit's crazy. Or Tibby in Australia was awesome. Yeah, when, when we when we did uh, uh, when I did Tibby in Australia, uh, and I had people coming up to me afterwards that told me that the accent sounded legit. I was like, "That's the yeah. best compliment you can give That's me." That's insane. Yeah. Any chance of a Kill Tony Festival fan from uh, fan question? Yes, there's of course a chance of a Kill Tony Festival. Probably less of a chance now than ever before. <laughs> Uh, question for Tony, favorite part of the whole show? That's a very broad, interesting question, but I would say that that is always evolving. My favorite part of any episode is a part that's different and sort of stands apart and that gives it its own DNA. Perfect example of random arm wrestling competition would, uh, <laughs> would be the one. William, go ahead. I'm going off of Jeremiah in regards to just accents. Just in bloody old England, probably my best accent is, Oh, hey, it is. Yep. Hey, dick. It's you, it's you, baby. Hey, dick. Weirdest, most annoying habits on the road. Uh, we've covered this on some Roadcast episodes. I don't know if you guys really want to get too much right. into that. Feeling right? a water bottle. Yeah, it's mostly all Jeremiah on that one. He's got some interesting ones. <laughs> Rock star. Built to be a star, this guy. Built to be a star. A lot of stars are pretty neurotic. They have their own things. He does make that noise after a sip of a water bottle, which he fills up, takes with him, crushes it down again, <laughs> fills it back up again. I, got, I mean, this is out of school, but... Every time we get to a hotel room, Jeremiah loves to take his socks off and scratch his feet on the carpet. <laughs> You're the best. This is, this, that's, no a real, that, that's a real one that nobody knows. <laughs> I go like this. Like, I, I do it like a cat. Like I, take, I take my socks off, and I literally go on the carpet. I go... Oh. <laughs> yeah, the carpet we both have to walk on. Oh, God, that is absolutely <laughs> fucking And Tony, disgusting. you have a theory about this. Uh, what do you mean? About the feet thing, why he does that. What do you mean? Because he has a fungus or something? or Yeah, you have itchy feet. You probably have a little... A, a little Jeremiah, athletes, something I've learned from going can, on the road. William, did I give you permission to talk right Tony, now? Tony, I'm so sorry. Okay, but now go ahead. You behaved yourself. Go ahead. Jeremiah, what I appreciate, you're a skinny dude. I'm a fat dude. I eat a bunch. Seems like you eat a bunch. Seems like you have sort of different ideals in regards to what goes in your burrito. You're a picky eater. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like. You're a picky eater. I don't like uh, onions and I don't like cilantro on anything. 
There you I, go. I don't put those in my burrito. And at onions, all. onions, right? Onions, yeah, onions and cilantro. No, you go. don't like French onion soup. I don't really like it too can much. I tried it. It's all right. Like I can do wow. onion rings and I can do like sauteed onions. Like, like peppers I can do, and onions. I can do animal. I don't get anal? onions with the Did peppers. You, say anal? Anal. You, can, you can do anal. Animal style oh. at uh, at In and Out. Oh, I, yeah. I I'll, I'll get like the the animal style where it's like the fried onions on the fries. Like that. Those don't bother but me. Like but a steak burrito. Let's say you got steak, cheese, salsa. You no, like salsa? I don't li- if it's their if it's like their uh, chunky salsa, no go. I what like about that I like, white I like sauce? Blended salsa. What's up? What about the white sauce? What's that called? Sour cream? Do you get that on there? I like sour cream. If Joel actually lost a Mexican drum off, would you honestly give him the boot? Yes. Absolutely. And does Joel have the ability to rechallenge? Of course. Of course. That would be one of the first things. That's that always the crazy. I think we've always waited for happen. you to actually lose. Because yeah. I think it's going to be a good day for all of us. I think we'll yeah, wow. it's going to be glorious. We're going to be trending on Twitter worldwide that day. MDO. Yeah, when that up. happens, I look at you guys and I'm like, these fucking snakes. I thought they were my friends. Snakes? It's a refillable show. There's always another episode yeah. coming. I look, even in a pandemic, here we are at the oldest comedy club in the world. Fun fact, the Ice House is literally the oldest comedy club in the world. While the comedy store is the most famous, perhaps the Ice House is the oldest. Did Joel you? snores. Whoa! Yeah. Look at really this. Really bad. I thought we moved on. No. They're throwing each other under the bus now. Joel His snores. grandfather is Hispanic. Okay, William. <laughs> hand, the the micro- fuck up. hand the microphone to David. I do I, I do this thing <laughs> where when when Joel and I are in the hotel room where yeah. if he drinks a little bit too much, he'll start snoring. <laughs> and which is <laughs> a lot of the time. Hello. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> Oh, you went after me with my feet? I've whoa, got secrets whoa. on you too. So uh, I'll do this thing where I go, hey, jo- Joel. Like, turn around. I go, I go, turn over. Joel. Joel, flip over. And he's like, what? what, what? He'll wake up like super like panicked. And then like I'll be like, please roll over. And he's like, okay, sorry. There you go. So I snore. Jeremiah rubs his dirty feet all over the carpet. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> Obviously, mine is worse. My goodness. My biggest complaint on the road is on the way from the airport, we had to take a, we got to take the limo, but on the way back, we had to take that dumb SUV. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, know. That's true. By we the way, when we went to Swansea, I brought Jesse earplugs because I know that I snore now. Aww. But we ended up staying awake until the, until we had to catch the plane and Joel just jumped from the <laughs> dresser onto the bed like a hundred times. Well, Red Band went live. What were you eating? <laughs> what? <laughs> Remember when Red Band went live before we went to the airport? I what did. Was I eating? I was eating Probably McDonald's food. or something. It was some kind of noodles. Hey, from Red the Band. Oh. Oh. Remember? <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> yeah. Can I say Remember? one thing? <laughs> yeah. Ramen noodles. I got. It. Yeah. Can I say one thing? Yes. Just, I swear to God, where I met David Lucas, just the Kill Tony and San Francisco. I swear to God, Red Band. When you threw the bucket at me, when you were far too drunk, just <laughs> going after me, oh, yeah. yelling at me, just was... it scared me. I thought you and I were buddies. Oh, you think you, you were scared about that? How do, how do you think I felt? No, that was knowing Tony's th- worst. Tony, I'm going to say pe- this to the 30,000 okay, people watching. Tony, I love you so much. Okay, hand the microphone But it was back very interesting hand watching you at that moment. David, right now. <laughs> David, do not give him, don't give that back to him. Now you have to ask fucking permission because you're a retard. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. In my fucking eye. Yeah. There you go. Get your Bunch eye of out. questions in here uh, that have nothing to do with the show. My fi- top five favorite bands, Pink Floyd. Uh, funniest behind the scenes thing about another cast member. We just covered that. What's William Montgomery's ideal woman or girlfriend? Nope. We, we already answered that. <laughs> Filipino. Someone, someone that stabs me with keys. Yeah. yeah. In Rex or car. Somebody yeah. with well, somebody with a drinking problem. <laughs> Jeremiah, is your long term goal still to be on SNL or are you happy being an independent artist? Interesting question at this time. They just suspended production. We're here at Kill Tony. We are doubling down, giving <laughs> episodes in front of empty audiences like Vince McMahon and so many Dana White, so many of my other great uh mentors. I 
I still would like a Saturday Night Live or an equivalent, which by equivalent, I would be totally fine with having my own sketch show. But that's still something that that is still the dream is to to have a place uh, um, of like a variety type show where I could take um, a bunch of uh, characters and put them in different scenes and, and kind of in like expand them in, in a different world setting and stuff like that. So uh, that's still the dream to a degree for sure. Yeah. Awesome. All right, another question from the fans. Fun fact, I texted Dom Irera if he had any questions for the cast, and he didn't answer me back. Not a good sign in this coronavirus time that uh, the legendary (laughs) Dom Irera didn't text me back. Hopefully he's okay. Any conspiracy theories that the cast of Kill Tony believes in? Uh, Any ones that we do believe in? I think Kennedy was shot by two people. Absolutely. Well, that everyone thinks. Limes limes are baby lemons. (laughs) That's not true. Uh, And you're off camera. uh, How about Chroma and Jesse? We've covered that on uh, Brothers and Cursive. Let's check in with these guys. Any conspiracy theories you guys do believe in? Flat Earth, perhaps? Or uh, No, no, no. The, the Kennedy one is definitely on my top list. I think there was definitely someone there. Give us another good side, one. You said you have a uh, list. Oh. <laughs> the government yeah. created crack. Um, I, do, I do think there was, uh, there was knowledge behind 9-11. I'm not saying they were behind it, but I think there was knowledge that they didn't oh, do anything to, uh, to help it. Oh, there definitely was. They were definitely warned that planes are going to be used as weapons coming. Absolutely. From the I mean, that's that's a fact. Uh, OK, let's check in with William Montgomery. Conspiracy theories that you believe this in. is a text from my father. He's watching this. He said now is probably a good time to shut the fuck up. Love, Papa. <laughs> He's hey, Larry. absolutely right. He's absolutely You have right. the best parents, by the way. Yes, you really do. Indeed. And uh, let's all let's give us all a chance to shut the fuck up. And let's why don't we all enjoy together um, uh, the second ever comedian uh, to perform on um, on uh, Kill Tony's history. And you could turn down the house lights a little bit so the people watching at home. Uh, can see it more clearly. This was the great Ron White insisting that he try to do a minute because comedians were bombing continuously out of the bucket. Uh, Mr. Tater Salad himself, one of the greatest comedians of the world, the great Ron White, live on Kill Tony. You can go ahead with that. I'm 60 years old and I know two things to be true. One, anything has the uh, potential to become a DUI checkpoint if you crash your car into it. <laughs> And you can't unfuck the babysitter. (laughs) Don't drink and drive. That's what they say. They also say friends don't let friends drive drunk. Well, which one is it? Somebody's got to (laughs) drive. I was leaving a party the other day, and this buddy of mine goes, hey, Ron, can you drive? I was like, I can drive. I can't get pulled over. (laughs) Now, I won't drive drunk, but I will ride with somebody that can't blow a .08 and I know it. Because .08 is not drunk. .08 is a revenue stream for the federal fucking government. What .808 is. That ain't drunk at all. That ain't kind of drunk. This is drunk. That guy can't drive my fucking car. (laughs) Now, I'm not saying I've never driven drunk because I've drank so much in my life. Now, on the back of my driver's license, there's a list of organs I need. (laughs) I was in Melbourne, Florida one time. I was driving a rental car, and uh, I'd had two drinks. I didn't make them. I don't know how strong they were. Tasted strong, whiskey and ice cubes. <laughs> and up in front of me, I see a sobriety checkpoint. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> and I get up there, and the cop goes, Mr. White, I smell alcohol on your breath. I said, that's been there since 77. <laughs> you pour that much scotch on a tongue, it's going to smell like scotch forever. There's nothing you can do about it. Try to take it to he said, I need you to blow into this breathalyzer. And I said, oh, I'm not going to do it. And I'll tell you why. Because if that piece of shit's calibrated wrong, I could be convicted of doing something I didn't do. 
and he said that I need you to do a field sobriety test. And I'm like, just tell me what you want me to do. He goes, I want you to stand on one foot, raise the other foot, bullshit, fuck that. I'm not doing that either. I'm not, and I'll tell you why. That's not a sobriety test, that's an agility test, and I'm not very goddamn agile. <laughs> I'm not. It's not fair to me because I'm older. I'm not in that great a shape. I may or may not be a little drunk. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> you know what a fair drunk driving test is? Drunk driving. Get in the car. Let's do a couple of blocks. Let me show you some skills. I'm not a 21-year-old Cuban cheap tequila through his nose. I'm a 60-year-old raging alcoholic, motherfucker. And that's what it said in the deposition. <laughs> Here's another fair test, darts. <laughs> we go back to O'Leary's pub where this whole fucking thing started. <laughs> if you can beat me at darts, you can take me to fucking jail. How about that? <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Absolutely. And by the way, Jeremiah, one of my favorite characters, you guys being the Back to the Future guys right there. Back to the Future's there, a young Chroma Chris, uh, covered in hair, Joel Jimenez, Jack Knight and Benji Aflalo as guests. Too. Pat Reagan, shout out to Pat, Pat Reagan. Reagan yeah. pa Patty Reagan. William too. says he has something that's very urgent. Okay, William, go ahead. This is a proof of your... I, d I did comedy in Denver two and a half years before I moved here. Uh -huh. I've been here now two years. There's a guy, Zach Reiner. He's probably not watching this, but he told me we were doing a show in Nebraska. Make it longer. So make the make the thing longer that you have to say. That he sold a joke to that guy, and it was literally the uh -huh. hit, being drunk, doing a DUI checkpoint, okay. hitting it too hard. It was so interesting hearing Very that. Very good. Hand the fucking microphone back to David. God, you are a train wreck, dude. <laughs> My God. Oh my God, you are unbelievable. Michael Lair is correct here. He said something. That's a Texas minute for dang sure. <laughs> that was a little bit longer than a minute. Yeah. Uh, Fucking amazing. David Lucas looks like he's. Oh, okie dokie. I guess we are. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, you guys playing a song? What are you guys song? doing? It's in the middle of. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> hey! Step back from that ledge. Step back from that ledge, my friend. For Jesse, since joining the band, is it tough to learn new songs for the week on top of putting together a costume? Um, it's a dream come true and really fun, actually. In fact, we, Jeremiah and I have been getting a lot better at writing our notes and we had a lot of help from Top Shelf Brass, which they, like when they write out our music, we can play instruments in different keys and we can just read the music really quick and harmonize. It is incredible. Uh, the the way, band's you, you process. You saw them, right? right? The other day? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, I did. I went and saw the Top Shelf Brass Band and the great Aphrodite on a Friday night or something like that. I was a little bit restless around midnight and uh, I jumped in a quick shower and uh, went out and caught them live. Surprised the hell out of them. They were very excited and uh, that was fun. Um, but anyway, it is incredible the process and I feel like a lot of people might not know how fast sometimes you put things together, especially on the road. Um, up to maybe sometimes I've seen you wait until an hour before the show to even start putting songs together. What's a Texas song or what's a New York song or things like that. You learned uh, in Columbus, you learned the Ohio State marching band stinger like 20, 30 minutes before the start of the show because it turns out it was in a different key and we kept not being able to quite find it. And I said that if you play this, the crowd will go crazy. They didn't quite respond like, they, like I thought they would. Ba, 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 ba. Fun fact, they are considered the best damn band in the land, and I'm paying homage to them every time I call these guys the best damn band uh, in the land. Can I say what I thought about? It's like it's so much fun what we do, but it, sometimes when you step back, you go like you forget how much work that we've done. Like it is a lot of work. We just we forget it sometimes because it is it is so fun what we're doing that you don't think of it in the moment, but it is a lot. Just so you know, we are working. I remember hard seeing all y'all preparation in Sacramento. Y'all started at like. 12 p.m. to get shit ready for like an 8 p.m. show. I was like, damn, these guys really are committed to it. Yeah, we were the, in, the, in that Airbnb in uh, the back patio area, and there's a dude who played saxophone <laughs> who was a neighbor, and he goes, uh, 
do you need any help? I go, no, we got it. And he goes, no. And then literally two minutes later, I hear him wailing on his sax inside his house yeah. to show, he like, I can play, play too. And I was yeah. like, it's just a faster process if, if I just do it real quick. William, does the thing you want to talk about have to do with what we're talking about it right It has here? to do with the movie Poltergeist Okay, too. there you go. Go ahead. There you go. Can it back to David? Can I say one thing, though? Go ahead. These pieces of shit on YouTube. Nope, there you I'm go. I'm sure Can't there's a the number of them watching off. right now. There you go. Hey, let's keep this momentum going on the band. Is Joel Bum Jet Ski's crowd applause? I believe they're talking about the newly founded Jet Ski. Ben, 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 ben. <laughs> then there's that one. Uh, is Joel Bum Jet Ski Johnson's crowd applause is a bit cooler than his? Wow. Honestly, fuck no. I love it, man. A rising tide lifts all ships. I love Absolutely. it. We're all killing it. Everybody's killing that it. That is man. the Kill Tony way, exactly. A win, a win for anybody is a win for uh, us all. It's a team sport. Fuck, Mary kill. William, David, Michael, go. Jesse Johnson, you're going to start this one off. You have to Don't fuck one, you have to marry one, and you have to kill one. I think this one's pretty easy. <laughs> it's pretty easy. I think, I think we know who, I think we definitely know who Jesse's going to fuck, that's for sure. <laughs> Go ahead, Jesse. <laughs> fuck, marry, kill. William, Blame David, <laughs> or Michael? Let's see. I'll marry David because he knows how to kill. Hey. I'm gonna kill William. <laughs> <laughs> really? You're gonna fuck Michael. And I'm gonna fuck that's, Michael. That's William. not right. That's yeah, I. Yeah. That's not right. You gotta kill Michael. Right, his dick ain't gonna he's, get hard. Well, he's also about to die. So no. Like, yeah, it's no. for charity. I, I got William dying before Michael anyway. On my. <laughs> that's a good bet for Bet DSI. I, can't I I'm know. I'm gonna kill William. <laughs> I don't breathe no more. <laughs> what would you be doing if not comedy? Wait, now you guys all have my to go. William, William, all right. Breaking Save it water. for Brothers in Cursive. You're days away from another Brothers in Cursive. <laughs> Tomorrow. So there you go. Save that energy, dude. All that energy goes somewhere. No. Any life hacks? <laughs> Any life hacks? What would you tell your 24-year-old selves? Interesting one. I like that. Uh, Write down every joke no matter what. This especially goes for people, I think, in their first five years of starting stand-up, or really anything. Every time that, uh, if you have an idea, write it down immediately. Record every set. There you go, for sure. Commitment is key. There you go. When I committed myself to the comedy store, that's when shit started happening. Absolutely. Goddamn right. Joel? Fuck, be grateful for what you have and stop worrying about what you don't. Absolutely. That's a really good one. No matter on what level that is, I think uh, I think that works. There's a little something for, uh, how about you guys down there? Chroma, any life hacks? Jesse, anybody? I was going to say, enjoy public gatherings. <laughs> <laughs> Chroma? Uh, just, uh, just enjoy people who, uh, who appreciate the stuff that you put out. I mean, that's it, yeah. Uh, I'll say, and this goes a lot with what, um, uh, Tony said it, and our buddy Jeff Ross has said it uh, a bunch. Either enjoy the process, or as Tony says, love the process. Uh, there's certain things uh, when you're doing mics, when you're early on in your career, that you kind of uh, take for granted uh, when you should really been, be soaking in as much as possible uh, certain things around you. I got reminded of, I was in San Antonio uh, last weekend, and uh, there's just like a group of comics there that were – they were all doing stand-up sets, but they were they ended up doing a bit separately. Uh, but it was for the good of the show. Like it didn't matter that they were kind of like losing their time. It was just more like a fun camaraderie thing that I saw that you don't get to do when you're doing like weekends and stuff, and you have you know certain kind of like paying customers and stuff like that, or like a three-person show or a two-person show. And it's just like uh, soak in uh, being around friends and 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 watching their sets and learning from them and and ha and and uh, have them learn from you and you all build and grow together and it's super great. Red band, why do you like poop fart? Uh, me like poop fart was actually 
because Tony got mad at the idea of me talking about poops and farts all the time. So I jokingly yeah, said, I, 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 I like, I'm just going to make a T-shirt that me like poop fart or something like that. And the next day I started selling me like poop fart shirts and they sold out immediately. Yes, they sold out. How many of those Dot did you gov. make? Uh, 200. 200 shirts. Wow, that's incredible. It's incredible that you sold 200 poop fart shirts and... As far as I know, maybe 15 Kill Tony shirts in the history of your T-shirt making career. Incredible stuff, Red Band. Very good. What a great businessman you are. Uh, Tony, any special skills or talents besides comedy? Look at that. Isn't that an interesting one? That's a fun one. Uh, I mean, sure. I played the piano since I was a little kid. I, uh, I, uh, can, can you read sheet music and stuff? I don't really. I never really learned how to read sheet music because I can play by ear, and it actually got me in a lot of trouble when I was a kid, because my music teacher, my mom, who we didn't have a ton of money growing up, even though she made a lot of a little bit of illegal money, people get it twisted and they think that just because they were, you know, in um, a little touch of organized crime that that means that you are rich, but. That was just barely to survive at those times in Youngstown. Anyway, she spent some Allegedly. of the little bit of money that we had on uh, piano lessons. And we had an upright piano against uh, the windows in my uh, dining room, the house where I grew up in, because the neighborhood was so bad that, um, that it was the only windows in my house on the first floor that didn't have bars on them. And uh, so we had an upright piano. Long story short, I would just learn the songs on there, and, uh, and then I'd go back and play it. But the music teacher, of course, noticed that I wasn't able to read the music. And she kept saying, Tony's just taking shortcuts, which I did for basically every type of learning thing throughout my entire life. And, uh, and eventually, fun fact, this is how crazy my neighborhood was that I grew up in. Eventually, uh, the robber, a robber ended up breaking through. They saw that there weren't bars on those windows. And they took an axe to that window one day when no one was home. And they busted through the upright piano. They literally went through the middle. If you have any idea how insanely solid, and this was an old school piano too, uh, but they went all the way through it and took a VCR and a regular Nintendo. I have a one of my favorite videos I ever got was you and your mom playing piano together at her house in uh, we were oh in yeah, Youngstown, right? right? Or Columbus yeah. it was awesome. Yeah. yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Who is Joel's favorite drummer? Dang, I'm going to have to go with uh, Byron McMacken from the band Pennywise. Oh, another oh. question from my mom for Joel Jimenez. Where did you get that purple dick? She thinks it's a dick. She doesn't even realize it's a dildo. <laughs> she thinks you took it off of a purple man of some kind. Yeah, I got it at a weird, uh, like a, the fucking crustiest of sex shops, and I believe Western and Santa Monica, and it was like the cheapest strap-on that I could find at any sort of uh, hey, sex shop. Here's store. a fun fact. Like I was looking at uh, in L.A., who uh, what places have the most coronavirus? West Hollywood has the most coronavirus. Because they can afford to travel. It's, yeah. I think it's like Absolutely. seven people. Or something. Absolutely. That's hilarious. Indeed. Um, when society collapses, which member of the cast will be most prepared? Also, which previous guest would you pick up that ha would have supplies for your new Mad Max-style camp? Um... Which, which previous guest would you pick up that would have supplies for your new Mad Max style camp? I think that's a pretty easy one. Probably me. Um, yes. Yes. Red Band would definitely be the most prepared. He would have a bunch of toilet paper, right? Well, I have a lot. Of, I just have a lot of stuff. Right. You're a hoarder. Pretty much. Yeah. We see your, in, your drunken Instagram stories late at well, night. I just, you, I just came from having a house. To now I have a storage unit, a studio, and an apartment. So you had a house? A, like when I was in Ohio, I had like a big uh, house, basement, garage, you know, and then when I moved here, it's pretty much, now I have a, I sold a lot of stuff, or my house, no, I was renting the house. I think I would be the most prepared. Um, I have a butt ton of common sense, and uh, what previous guests would I pick to, I would have supply, I don't really get that. But I would bet on me. I would definitely stay at my place. Louis J. Gomez. <laughs> Why? Bruh, I watch Walking Dead. He just reminds me of like a Rick Grimes. He's the first one to get the coronavirus. Yeah, him. but he'll survive a, a post-apocalypse world. He's grimy. Well, most Puerto Ricans are like that. 
Top three favorite all-time Kill Tony moments. I guess that'll go for everybody, even though it says me. But, uh, I mean, there's a lot of mine, ton of them. I just love, uh, I love uh, locking in guests. I would say that having, I don't even remember how the episode went, probably not even that great, but we once had Sebastian Maniscalco, Sinbad, and, uh, oh, God, someone else. Jimmy Carr on one episode. Thank you, Ryan J.E. Belt. Um, which is just insane. Jimmy Carr is one of the biggest comedians out of England. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant mind. Master level roaster. My God, you two would fucking never end. He, oh, my God. You, Bring he, him back. Oh, he would blow your mind, David. As He's scary. As He's Donnell levels of uh, roast scary. As long as he lets me talk, I don't. Oh, he'd let you talk, and then yeah. you, you would you would wish you had. He'll let you dig your own grave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Another, uh, I'll put this in there. Uh, one of my favorite things about the show is watching Ryan J. E. Belt's uh, evolution of drawings. He's always an unbelievable artist. Red Band and I both separately, two different occasions, asked him to join the show. We said that we have a great show uh, that uh, would be awesome for him to draw, not even knowing that the other one had already asked him, and eventually he came. But to get to watch the intricate evolution of his skills, I loved it when we had to start every week having a different Iron Patriot. We, like when we have t- Tiffany Haddish. I think we even had Jeremiah as a Patriot once. And then it grew into a band. You know, yeah. we started having Pat Reagan. Just watching that transformation to a psycho fucking cunt all the way Jesus to the Brian. band right wow, now. Wow, there you go. The liquor's kicking in for Brian, everybody's <laughs> montgomery up right now. Um, no. A fun fact about uh, Pat filling in for the – Patriot is that Pat could be considered a riot, right? P A T, riot, spells out Patriot. Fun fact for you. <laughs> no, that wasn't a joke. That was just an interesting. That, no, I thought about it fucking years ago when I made it happen. Huh? Crazy, right? There's a bunch of those little fun facts. Chroma Chris, how many jokes you sit on every Kill Tony? Do you sit on extra jokes, Chris? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> because, like, <laughs> I have to keep my batting average up to, like, at least close to 100. So I got to sit on so many of them. Just How like about this. tonight? How many are you sitting on right now? <laughs> I think I've silently <laughs> said to myself at least three. <laughs> yeah. By the way, can I just say 100 is a terrible batting average? <laughs> <laughs> batting averages go up to 999. <laughs> Wait, what? That means <laughs> that means you only get yeah, one like out of every 10 hits. 365 is like a good batting average. Yeah. Sports. <laughs> oh, I bat 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting one. Human centipede cast. What would the order be if we were human centipedes? I got bad news for everyone. David Lucas is in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You, you think he David? Can't be, he can't be up front. <laughs> I don't think he's up front, but you think you, you <laughs> Red Band will lead anything. You don't think Dude, Red it's a okay. red, it's I a got, Red Band and David Lucas yeah. tail. On no, no, no. William and Red Band. Who would you guys put first? Uh, uh, well, it would be me, then Jesse Johnson. Then I don't give a fuck about the rest. Oh, I, I, no matter what, God. you do not want to eat follow that red ass, band Jess. Whatsoever. Wow, Red Band. Everybody at home. One, two, three. Trash can. Hey. You know what you did. Craziest experience on the road. One stand out to you guys? I mean, mine's a no-brainer. Food poisoning. Dublin, Ireland, Manchester, England. I mean, it just didn't get any crazier wa- than that. I want to say one for Joel and I, uh, I think, was the first time we did a road show where we did a recurring character and the crowd knew who those characters were that we got like a pop. I think that that was like, kind of like, we kind of looked at each other. We we're like, Oh, they, they, they know, like they, they like these characters. You For know sure. what I mean? Like that, sure. that was a special moment. Cause we're like, Oh, it's working. Like it, like it's I don't know. Yeah, anytime you're like, we have a band and they go like, ah, I'm like, damn. Okay. What, what's the text from your dad, William? Uh, please hush. You're irritating the shit out of everybody. <laughs> Sit still and listen. Put your fucking hand down. 
There you go. Absolutely. I agree with that. That's so smart. He ain't going to listen. 100%. But I also want to take a moment to agree with Jeremiah. All those things go a long way with me when, the, when I recognize that the audience, especially on the road, is picking up on something. I remember the first time that they chanted Joelberg. I remember Inventura really being one of the better ones. Uh, the first time that we saw the audience do the jet ski uh, for Jesse Johnson because that La Jolla episode, I do believe it was, came out that um, day. Yeah. So it was just a few guys in the front row that literally had just probably listened to it on their way there. And uh, they were doing it when people pop big for, like, William at Kill Tony Mania or David Lucas when he sits back and is about to start roasting people. All these things, you know, it reminds me of old school pro wrestling. There's bad guys and good guys and people you like and people that win you over and this and that. Jeremiah? William's pandering in San Francisco was my favorite one. Oh, my God. The Golden Gate... The, the Golden Gate Bridge, you saying yeah. that if you were to jump off a bridge, it would be the Golden Gate Bridge. We want to know <laughs> how big Joel Berg's member really is. Joel, do you have any measurements for us? That yeah, I'd say it's uh, eight and a half inches hard. Eight and a half inches hard. What about that girth, though? We saw the girth. At I'd say it's Fest. like about that. Yeah, like maybe I can touch my, my thumb that, to my middle like a, finger is about. Is like a beer can? Like thumb to my middle finger about maybe like, I don't know, maybe... Like the, about that? Would you say that? Okay. Oh yeah, that's okay. that's pretty yeah. thick. That would say I would it, say that it, that is the about the width of a uh, like a hot dog, a, a, a Red Bull can, like a Red Bull. Yeah, Red Bull can. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, David Deary, you want to you want to come up here and say something or uh, talk about something or rant about something? Want to do a minute? No, you good? How about you, Ryan J? About you want to do a minute? Whoa, <laughs> I think he's thinking about it. He didn't say no right away. Ryan J, you want to do anything? I All right, that's fine. Janice? No? A closeout song? Should we do a big uh, sing-along to end this thing? Matchbox 20, push, push. Lord, I lift your name on high. You guys know this one? Lord, I lift your name on high. I don't even know that. What is that? Lord, I love to your praises. Oh, wow. Does ev- does everybody know Push or Marcy's Playground? Sex and candy. Yeah. One that the whole one that the whole cast can do. Uh, we can do that. We could get out of here. Everybody uh, at home want to sing along with us? <laughs> I mean, maybe. I don't know. Sorry. Can you pull up a karaoke "Sex and Candy" but put it on mute? No, it's okay. They can they can do it. Put it bring it up on YouTube. Put it on mute. Show the camera. Show that. Uh, show that camera right there. Your uh, your drawing. There you go. Here's the drawing from Ryan J. Ebel. You can sort of see that. Go a little bit closer there, Ryan J. Sex and candy. A little bit Marcy's closer. Playground. Yes, sir. There yes, sir. It is. Wow. That looks great. And Ryan so J. Cool. Ebelt's having a sale right now at his website, RyanJEbelt.com. Check every out Every poster, stuff. every print, RyanJEbelt.com. It's very exciting. Uh, yeah. Is there a karaoke version with the lyrics up there? We could bring up and you could put it on mute. Maybe just dim the lights a little bit, or do they have to go all the way off? We'll get out of here together. We love you, listeners out there. Be safe. Coronavirus is a real thing. We'll figure out something to do next week, too. Uh, Maybe a smaller venue, perhaps. Shout out to Mitch for letting us do this. The Ice House, the oldest comedy club in the world. I had to swing by the comedy store today. You guys sing it. I had to swing by the comedy store today. Start it over, dude. (laughs) William, be nice. All right. Here, wait, wait. And hey, there you go. Mute it. Don't talk by myself. And I had so much time to sit and think about myself. And there she was. Yeah. Like double cherry pie. Yeah, there she was. Like disco superfly.
say again. Everybody for joining us for this very fun episode of Kill Tony. Live stream, dead crowd, wash your hands, love one another, take care. We'll be back in some form or another next week, everybody. We love you. Yeah, mama, it is so My father Larry telling me to shut up, just being like, William, you're bothering them. My God. I smell Sprite and vodka here. <laughs>